will shift the atmosphere, God. God, that worship will go forth, God. God, that praise will go forth, God. God, that when the word comes forth, God, God, that it will fall on good ground right now in the name of Jesus. Now, God, we ask, God, that you will let every person represented here, God, every person that's at home, God, that's watching on YouTube, God, that's watching on Telegram,
to him because he can take care of it anyway. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may have your take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the Heights Ministries where we are equipping kingdom citizens. Amen. Amen. And we want to welcome everyone on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram and those who are physically here. For the Bible says where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. And how many of you know he's omnipresent, so you may not be in the building physically, but if you allow him to be Lord of your life, then his presence is with you as well, wherever you may be. Amen? Amen. So we're going to move forward in the morning worship. And just want to make a, one quick announcement. We have Bible study has resumed. Wow, Bible study. Amen. Love thy neighbor. And you will be getting more information via text, via email. We want you to click on Zoom and to gather as we're studying on love thy neighbor. Amen. Amen. And so what the Bible says that we ought to study to show ourselves approved, a workman who can rightly divide the word of truth. And we got to be studying in this hour more fervently. Amen. So we invite everybody to join us on Wednesday night, and we're going to move forward with the aspect of worship and giving uh, monetarily, amen? Yes. How many of you know if it had not been for the Lord on your side? He is our source, right? He gives everything to us that we need, and so we press in to Jehovah Jireh, our provider, and so we can give um, by cash app, the dollar sign, the Heights Men, also on Give La Fly, and you can actually mail a check 
uh, physically or money order to 2137 B Avenue, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28216 here at the Heights Ministries. And so we want to sow into the kingdom of God because we advance in the kingdom, the Heights, right? We got kingdom work to do, right? Amen, amen. So we're going to go to the Lord in prayer for our tithes and offering. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to sow into your kingdom, God. We thank you for a hot posture to give back unto you a portion of what you've given to us, Lord. And we declare and decree as we sow by faith, as we give by faith, Lord God, that you are Jehovah Jireh. So you are the God who provides and make all provision. So we're not going to be stingy with what you've given us to us, Lord. We give it cheerfully, Lord God and gregariously unto your kingdom that lives will be saved, transformed, people will be healed and delivered, resources will be released to those who are in need, God. So bless this offering, this time, Lord God, may we receive back 30, some 60, some 100 fold, Father, and I thank you that the, the Heights Ministry is a storehouse for your people. There'll be meat in your house, God. And so we thank you and we love you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. We say amen. Amen and amen. Amen.
God, we thank you for your glory. Mm. Because wherever your glory is, there is liberty. There is freedom. There is deliverance. There is healing. Wherever your glory is, God, your power and anointing dwells. Wherever your glory is, God, I'm able to continue to persevere and endure. Wherever your glory is, the enemy can't dwell in that place because your glory saturates the atmosphere in such a way that he cannot even approach. God, thank you for your glory. Matter of fact, I thank you for your glory that, that resides with me, God. And even, when, even when I'm out of the wheel, God, your glory is still encapsulated around me. God, thank you for your glory. And God, 
because of your glory that I desire to be where you are, God. Because you're omniscient, you're omnipresent, you're everywhere at all times. So God, that I must also be where you are in search for you. And so God, allow your glory to continue to reign on us right now. Whether you are here physically in worship or on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, however God, on our conference call, I allow your glory to reign. God, thank you now for your glory. And God, we pray that even now as your glory reigns, hide the preacher behind the cross. That your glory is what they see. God, take these lips of clay, fashion them and form them to speak what the glory desires to speak. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit inside of me, God. So I don't hinder what your glory is about to do. Allow your glory to fall fresh, your anointing to fall fresh. That somebody might cry out, I yield, I yield. What must I do to be saved? Allow your glory to fall, God. That somebody can say, Lord, I've fallen short. Allow me to re recommit, rededicate my life to you. Uh, let your glory fall. So more laborers will desire to be a part of your harvest, you know, to be your service. God, let your glory just let your glory <laughs> yeah I just, I'm just, I'm just pausing. I'm just pausing for you to, for you to experience glory. I'm just, I'm just pausing Facebook for you to, I'm just pausing YouTube for you to experience glory. I'm just, I'm just taking 30 seconds. I'm not going to say another word for 30 seconds for you to honor his glory. Come on, don't let his glory pass. Come on, don't let him pass. He's here. He's where you are right now. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. God, thank you now for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come now. Come now, I want those who are on Facebook, those who will be watching YouTube, those on our conference call, and those who are here. Come on, let's give God some glory for his glory. Come on, magnify his name for his glory. Okay, see, don't play church on me. Don't try to play church on me. Don't, don't play around with the glory. I need to talk to some folk who needs God's glory. I need somebody who needs a breakthrough. I need to talk to somebody who says, I need deliverance right now. I need to talk to somebody who says, I need to be free right now. Oh, don't play. Come on. Come on. I, I can't go home like this. I can't let another hour go like this. I can't. I can't. I can't. I gotta. I gotta. Come on. His glory. His glory. Somebody praise him for his glory. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Uh, come on now. Uh, while you stand to your feet, for those who are here physically, and for those who are joining us on Facebook Live, and those who are joining us by YouTube, come on, go with me to a particular text of the Old Testament, very familiar text, uh, Exodus chapter 14 beginning at verse 13 exodus come on come on if somebody don't got a word near you make sure you share it however you share it whether it's with the physical bible 
Bible app or tablet. Come on now. Exodus chapter 14, verse number 13. We're going to begin there. I'm going to read down to verse number 28. And while we're searching for that even now, for those who are joining us virtually and here, those who are here in the sanctuary with us, first I want to say thank you to everyone who helped me celebrate 17 years of pastoral ministry. Thank you for every card, every words of expression, every gift of love. Thank you so much. 17 years. Somebody say, wow, wow. 17 years of me being here. 18, but 17 officially. And I thank God for the opportunity to serve you as pastor. Amen. So I just want to say thank you. Me and Lady Audra, just thank you so much. You were so good to us. Next Sunday, somebody say pink out. Now, next Sunday, we're, we're, we're coming to honor Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We want everybody, whether you're on Facebook, YouTube, everybody on a conference call line, everybody here in person, come on with your pink now. Amen? I don't hear nobody pink. Amen? Amen. Amen. As we come, and Lady Arthur's going to have a poem and a few words for us for Breast Cancer Awareness for those who, uh, who have survived and overcome. Amen. Amen. And even for those who have gone on to glory, uh, we want to honor them. Amen. Amen. Exodus chapter 14, verse number 13. I'm going to read it out of the NIV version this week. The NIV version this week. Uh, very familiar text. Here it is. The word of the Lord reads as follows. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance of the Lord. The Lord will bring to you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Y'all feel like, I feel like I might need to stop right now. All right, God. Okay, all right, all right, all right. A little something happening here. Amen, amen. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. <laughs> Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. I, and I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army. Don't you know God will use your enemy to gain glory? Okay, all right. Through the chariots and his horsemen, the Egyptians, you will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. Then the angel of the Lord who had been traveling in front of Israel's army withdrew and went behind them. The, a, the pillar of cloud also moved in, from in front and stood behind them. Coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Look at somebody say he's coming between the enemy. Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to, to the one side and light to the other side. So neither went near the other all night long. Verse number 21, then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And all that night, the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided and the Israelites went through the, the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them, and all the Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord locked that look down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptians' army and threw it into confusion. He jammed the wheels of the chariot so that they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptian says, let's get away from the, from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. At daybreak, the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariot and the horsemen, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not one of them survived. You ought to look at somebody and say, you better know who you're messing with. Okay, just take your seats real quick. Take your seats real quick. Take your seats real quick. Verse, verse number, verse number 14. Verse number 14. The verse number 14. And the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Now I'm beginning a new series today. 
And this series is a four-part series that is titled, Don't Lose Your Momentum. All right? Don't Lose Your Momentum. In the first installment of this, of this series, this, this sermon is titled, Keep It Moving. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, Keep It Moving. In spite of opposition and barriers, keep it moving moving. Now, I want us to understand what momentum is, all right? So, therefore, momentum, according to the Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, you know I love that dictionary. According to the Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, momentum is strength or force gained by motion or by a series of events. Now, we realize that there can be both positive momentum and negative momentum, but for, but for the series, I'm not dealing with the negative momentum because it is my belief that, that when you're having good momentum, you want to keep it going. When it is negative momentum, you want to stop. Uh, okay? All right? Positive momentum, you want to keep it moving. Negative momentum, you want to stop. And so, in essence, to understand momentum, the, uh, uh, one analogy is, it's like having a wagon at the top of a hill. And at the top of the hill, that, that wagon is then pushed, and as it's rolling down the hill, it is gaining momentum. It is picking up speed. It is moving faster as it is going down the hill, making progression. That even when it gets to the valley, it will continue to move because of the momentum that it has already gained. Okay, let me come and get you another analogy. could be a snowball. When you, when you put a snowball at the top of of a hill. It can start out a little small. It can begin little. But as you push the snowball down the hill, it does two things. One, it gains momentum, but then also it gets larger. And so that as it makes progress down the hill, not only is it gaining momentum, not only is it getting larger, that when it gets to the bottom of the hill, it still has enough Force and it still has enough strength to continue to go on through the flat part of the bottom of the hill. Now, now I want to get you because we need to realize and understand that all of us at times have some positive momentum, meaning there are some things that are flowing and going in our lives by which we don't want to stop. We want to keep it moving. Matter of fact, we want that force to be stronger. We want it to be better. We want it to grow larger. Why? Because we have come from a place where we realize what, what n negative momentum can do. <laughs> as a believer, uh, as one who knows Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, we deal with momentum all the time, whether it is positive or negative. Uh, at times, uh, things are going on in life, whether it is the enemy or whether it's the enemy in me. Look at somebody say, me, myself, and I. Uh, or, or at times, uh, or it's just the universal law of things in the air, meaning that the universal law, that whatever goes up, must come down. Uh, everything they live, going to die. You plant a seed, you're going to get a harvest. That's the universal law. And at times, it provides some momentum. Some things, things can be going good. <laughs> and then some things, things can be going bad. Uh, uh, there should be some seasons, everything's all right. There's some seasons, everything seems to be like it's going wrong. I mean, we just have momentum. But then there are also the momentum of negative or positive momentum in me. Uh, when things are going good. I'm doing good. I can shout. I can praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I can, I, you know, I can, I can live good. I got a smile on my face. I don't have an attitude when I wake up before I had my coffee. Amen. Uh, I mean, you know, we, we you know when things can be going, sometimes the momentum can be positive. I'm, I feel good about life. I have great prospects. It seems like, it just seems like I got a flowery vision of things. It just, everything just seems to be working. But then also in life, in me, at times there are some things that dwell within me that can create some negative momentum. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go into your struggles because y'all looking at me real bad right now. And those on Facebook are trying to click off and come back when I get to more positive stuff. But what I'm trying to help you say is that in life, the enemy in me can be at times uh, I can have positive momentum 
and I can have some negative momentum. Then, I, then there are the spiritual things uh, in life. Uh, being that I am a believer, I have God's spirit in me. And as long as I have God's spirit in me, uh, it means that I'm progressing. I'm moving towards greater things. I'm prospering. I'm walking in the favor of God. I'm operating in the anointing of God. My gifting is making room for me. I mean, it just seems everything I touch turns to gold. Everywhere I place my feet, it seems I'm prospering. I mean, my worship and my praise is at a whole new level. I've got some positive momentum in spiritual things. I mean, I'm speaking things. I'm declaring things. I'm prophetically speaking things. I mean, you know, I'm, I ain't calling nobody to lay hands on me. I'm laying hands on myself. I ain't got to call pastor whining and crying. <laughs> because I can go to the Lord myself. I mean, I'm, I got some positive momentum. I mean, it's building, it's growing. I'm in a good spiritual place. My devotions are awesome. My praise is off the chain. I mean, my worship, I'm bowing down. I mean, my prayer life, I'm seeing it. Down. I mean, there are times spiritually I have some positive momentum. But then as well, spiritually, as much as you got some positive momentum, that's when the enemy starts starts to ramp up his that's when the devil tries to come up against you that's when the devil says no I'm going to stop all this God getting glory from their life so I so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit back and be more crafty because I know what gets Deacon Carl upset I know see y'all trying to be cute I, I know I know what I know what their struggles are I, I, I know I know where at times uh, their minds Minds can wander. I, I, I'm, I'm going to see how much of this positive spiritual momentum uh, they going to keep when I start throwing these fiery darts at them and they really want to take a smoke and they really want to drink and they really want to answer that call late in the midnight. <laughs> okay, y'all quiet. I, I, I want to see I want to see how, how much positive momentum they're going to have when maybe I cut off the faucet of the money. Maybe, maybe, maybe I charge a little trouble in in the workplace. Maybe even I'll mess them up. When they go to church I'll send some of my imps in the church and disturb their worship and disturb their pray. When you get positive momentum the enemy is going to try to stop that momentum. <laughs> so we deal with momentum. Whether it's positive and or negative. Catch this in a particular text, y'all. I'm just going to walk through it because you've been to Sunday school. You've been to Bible study. You've been to vacation Bible school. You know all about the children of Israel. You know that they cried out to the Lord for 400 years and in the midst of crying out because they were in bondage and they wound up going into bondage because there was a Pharaoh who recognized, who did not recognize them and said, hold up, they're too plentiful. They're getting too powerful. We need to enslave them. And so for 400 years, they found themselves in slaves living beneath God's purpose and plan for them as the children of Israel. And so here it is that they cried out to the Lord. The Lord would allow them and bring forth an awesome leader by the name of Moses. My God. He would raise up Moses and Moses would be the one that God would use as a chosen vessel to lead them out of their bondage. They have had 400 years of negative momentum. They have had 400 years of negative momentum because they have been in bondage. 400 years of negative momentum not being recognized as the true children of Israel. So they began to cry out. We know the story how the Lord hears their cry. And as he hears their cry, we know how it is that then God says he's going to come up against Pharaoh. Pharaoh uh, Moses, you go before him and tell him that the God I am has sent you. And he says, that, and they're going to try some tricks on you because you know the enemy always going to try some tricks on you. Oh, see y'all quiet. The enemy always going to try some tricks, some, some, some mystical tricks and some, some majestical tricks. And, and so the Lord said, but don't worry about it. You just, I got a trick for them too. You just throw down this staff. The staff goes and he chews, he eats up the snakes of the Pharaoh. And so here it is. The Lord says, well, Pharaoh's heart is hard and he's not going to let you go. So this is what I'm going to, I'm going to send 10 plagues, my God. And so the Lord sends 10 plagues. 
It breaks the backs and the will of the Egyptians. Pharaoh calls Moses. Says, Moses, take your people, take all of them, and get out of here. Go ahead and worship your God like you said you want to. Get every last one of them. I'm getting ready to break this momentum. This momentum is working against us. We want you to go. We want you to leave. And in the midst of it, look how the Lord works. When the Lord shifts momentum, not only do you get released, least you get everything else okay Lamel they don't get it uh, Pharaoh says hold up one second take all of our riches with you <laughs> and they take all the riches and they begin to make their way towards the Red Sea uh, you feel this? The, you feel the momentum shifting? You see the momentum changing? Now here it is. They're getting ready and they're leaving. They got everybody. They got all the riches of Egypt and they're going and they're getting ready to make their way and they're headed towards the Red Sea. They're headed towards the wilderness. They're getting ready to head towards the promised land. The momentum is building. We are now free. Uh, the enemy says, but hold on one second. The Bible says, if you read verses 1 through 12, Pharaoh and his post officials said, hold up one second. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. We made a mistake. Uh, no, we got to go back and get them. Uh, we got to go get, we got to get our property. We got to get them. We got to bring them back. Uh, in essence, let me come and get you because y'all thinking about the Egyptians and not yourselves. Here it is. The enemy says, the enemy says, hold up one second. They're giving God way too much praise. Uh, they, they've had some major breakthrough. Uh, they, they've experienced some awesome healing. Hold up one second. Their worship, their prayers that they've been crying out to the Lord. They are experiencing it. They're giving God way too much glory. They're way too happy. I mean, they're running around the church. I mean, I mean, they're on the phone telling everybody and lifting up the name of the Lord or how God blessed them and how God delivered them and how God made a way out of no way. I mean, I mean, they, they, are, they are experiencing a break in momentum. Look at somebody say a break in momentum. Uh, listen, listen, don't make light of the small breaks in momentum. I got to catch this. When you had enough of bad things, when you had enough of slavery, okay, see so y'all trying to be cute. Come on, Facebook. Come on, chat back at me. When you've had enough and when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired and the way of your the way you are living and the surrendering to your flesh, and you and you are sick and tired of sick and tired of living beneath who it is that God had purpose you to be. Uh, when you get a little break in momentum, you ought to get your stuff, pack everything, and say, let's keep it moving. Somebody say, keep it moving. Okay, catch this. They said, keep it moving. Look at what happens. Look at what happens. And so they begin to make their way. As they're making their way, Pharaoh says, hold up one second. Uh, now, this ain't going to work. We're going to go get our property. We've got to go get the people. And so, listen, look what happened. Now they're getting ready to face some opposition to their momentum. <laughs> they're getting ready to face some opposition to their momentum. The people are making their way. They're excited. They're celebrating as they're moving forward towards the Red Sea, towards the wilderness, towards the promised land. And now when they turn back, you know, you, you, come on now, y'all be real with me. You know, you kind of like to look back a little bit to see where you come from. It, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. It's okay to look back. Look, look at your neighbor and say, don't go back. But you can look back. You, you, you can look back to see from whence where God has brought me. Hold up one second. Can I, can I stop here one second? To, can, I, can I make a day? Listen, after 400 years of hell, okay, I'm sorry then. Come on, Mother Right. I didn't cuss. I'm just saying. After 400 years of going through what I went through, uh, every once in a while, you ought to take a look back and say, God, I thank you because I'm no longer in the negative momentum. I'm moving forward. Look at somebody and say, keep it moving. Okay, so they're looking forward. Catch this, Lamel, they're looking. But now, hold up, hold up, hold up. See, the enemy, catch this. The enemy wants you to see something when you look back. <laughs> Be, okay, hold up, y'all missed that. Slow down, slow down. Okay, catch this. The enemy wants you to see something when you look back. Look at what that, they, they begin to see the chariots in the dust and everything start to kick up. They begin to see that, that the Egyptians are coming after them. They begin to see that now the Egyptians are trying to reclaim them. And in the midst of it, they look back. Now, hold up. Momentum is good. But you know what? As momentum builds, you get stronger. When momentum builds, you begin to grow. But at 
this point, they're not at a place where they can look back and still not see how it can affect them. <laughs> well, I don't have enough time to preach. So when they look back, they get kind of scared. Even after the Lord has done everything, they kind of get a little scared. And so look what happens. The enemy says, no, nah, I'm opposing them leaving. I'm opposing them getting momentum. And in the midst of the catch this, the Lord says to Moses, hold up one second, Moses. I understand uh, the enemy is trying to come back and get them. But I'm getting ready to flip the script on some things. Uh, matter of fact, this is what I'm getting ready to do. Moses, I gave you a staff. I want you to raise your staff. And when you raise that staff, I'm getting ready to flip the script just like I did though see y'all missed it so therefore what I'm going to do I'm going to put up some barriers uh, to hinder the enemy from stopping your momentum oh my god I just said something you got to shout right there look at your neighbor and say neighbor my god will put up the barriers uh, to protect me my god uh, will put up the barriers uh, to stop the enemy uh, from coming up against me my God uh, will put up barriers uh, to watch over me uh, while he's flipping the script on the enemy. Catch this. The problem we have is that we try to flip the script instead of waiting on God to do it. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. No, 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 no. Catch this. He flips the script on them because what he does is he moves the pillar of cloud, the pillar of fire from, from the front of them now to the back of them. The pillar of fire becomes what protects them so that they don't stop their momentum. Look at somebody and say, keep it moving. Even in the midst of opposition, I don't know where we get this as believers. We're sitting back acting like the, the devil just going to let you go and the devil's going to let you be free. No, baby, the devil don't want to let you go, but you got a God who is superior. You got a God who is all powerful. You got a God who is mighty. So when you got good momentum, just keep trusting God. Okay, I got a kid to quit it. Catch this. Look at this. So they, so Moses, he flips the script on them because they're making some positive momentum. They look back. They saw the chariots. They saw the horsemen. They got a little scared down them. They said, okay, Lord. The Lord said to Moses, said, okay, catch this. What I want you to do, I want you, I want you to lift your rod, lift your rod. And you lift your rod, I'm going to flip the script on the enemy. But then catch this. Look at this. There's a few things that happen. Catch this. Look at this. If you read down, go down to verse number 19. In verse number 19, it says, then the angel of God who had been traveling in front of the Israel's army withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved in front and stood behind them. Listen, I want you to understand when you got momentum, you keep it moving because God always has an intercession plan. <laughs> okay, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God always has a plan to intercede. <laughs> okay, y'all missed the place to shout. God had already had a plan to intercede on your behalf so that you can keep momentum. But what you got to do is yeah, you got to be obedient and you got to trust God. You okay? See, that's the problem. That's the problem. See, what happens is that you got you to gotta be able to trust God. Catch this. Hasn't God already done enough for you to trust him? Okay, okay. Let me stop because, see, y'all trying to be cute up in here. And y'all trying to be somewhat bougie because you're all dressed up. But hasn't God, hasn't he already heard your cry? That's the reason why you're leaving now. Hasn't he already shown Pharaoh that he has no power over you? That's why you got momentum now. Hasn't God already brought the Pharaoh down to his knees? That's the reason you got momentum now. Hasn't God already sent two plagues, ten plagues, uh, that has literally wiped out uh, uh, Egypt? Uh, uh, that's why you got momentum now. Okay, I can't help somebody. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, uh, the reason I'm still alive today uh, is because I know God has an interception plan. I'm going to keep it moving. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it sounds like. I don't care what's in front of me. And I'm not going to stop for what's behind me. I'm going to keep it moving. Because every step I take, God has a plan to intercede on my behalf. Okay, y'all missed a place to shout. How many of you are willing to admit right now that the reason you're still here after everything? Everything you've been through, after everything.
everything the devil tried to do to you, after everything the enemy tried to bring against you, the reason I'm still here, because God had an interception plan. Okay? Okay, they tell me I got to run, catch this. Look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. Not only does he have an interception plan, but then catch this, catch this. Lastly, keep it moving in spite of opposition and barriers. The reason you're going to keep momentum is because God has already equipped you for the challenges ahead. <laughs> Woo! Uh, Sometimes I preach so good, I feel like shouting myself. Uh, okay, catch this, catch this. I'm in the text, I'm in the text. Verse number 26, they're looking at me, I got to go. Catch this, verse number 26. Look at what happens. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians uh, and their chariots and their horses. Catch this, look at Moses. Moses stretches out his hand over the sea and at daybreak the sea went back to the place. Hold up one second, Pastor. The first First time Moses stretched out his hand in the rod, but this time he said, "Stretch out your hand." <laughs> okay, y'all missed the place. Don't you know that God has already equipped you to keep the momentum going? God has already given you the smarts. God has already given you the wisdom. God has already given you the knowledge. God has already given you the power. God has already given you the anointing. God's favor is already upon you. Look at your neighbor and say, "Neighbor." I allowed the enemy to let me drop my hands but when I start lifting up my hands you know when you lift your hands you know what that means when I lift my hands that begins to praise and when praises go up blessings come down who do I need to talk to today look at your neighbor and say neighbor after everything I've been through God has already equipped me to overcome and that's why I'm going to keep it moving. I'm going to keep it moving because I know that God has already equipped me. I got to run but I feel like I got to keep preaching just a little bit longer. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't lose your momentum. God has already equipped you. He's equipped you for that business. He equipped you for that relationship. He's equipped you uh, for that marriage. Uh, he equipped you uh, for your children. Uh, he equipped you uh, for your foundation. Uh, he's equipped you uh, for your nonprofit. Uh, he's equipped you. Uh, he's equipped you for your home, uh, for your community. Uh, everything that you need uh, is already in you. Uh, but I need somebody right now uh, who's willing to say, uh, God. Uh, I'm getting ready to stretch out my hands. Catch this. When he stretched out his hands, the waters departed. They went on dry ground. And as they went on dry ground, they get across to the other side. Look at somebody and say, keep your momentum. Look at somebody and say, keep it moving. But now when they get to the other side, God swallows up the Egyptians. God swallows up all of the chariots. God swallows up all of the horsemen. God swallows up all of the enemy so they can see no more. What are you saying, preacher? You keep it moving and God will take care of the enemy. Keep your momentum. Keep it moving. Keep it going. Don't stop. Keep it moving. Keep it going. Don't stop. Keep it moving. Keep it going. Don't stop. Keep it. Keep. Keep. Don't stop. Keep going. Keep going. You're going somewhere. God's taking you somewhere. God's the...
because he kept us alive because there's more. He's kept us alive because there is more. And God is requiring more of us. So we can't let the negative momentum inflex our spirit, man. Because the God of angel armies is with us. And if God be for us, then who can be against us? Don't you know no demon, no imp? Nothing can come against you as long as you're in the presence of the Lord. Don't you know that Jesus already done the work for you? He already snatched the enemy back from your life. So that's why you got to give him glory. Because you got to keep it moving.
baby. Keep taking those steps. And when you think you got the feeling to want to go back, remain forward in the presence of the Lord. See, we miss those instructions, but we got to remain in his presence not to go back. And when we're strong enough, he'll tell us now you can go back. And it's not to go back to look at your life, but it's to go back and snatch somebody else out of bondage.
may we have mind of Christ. Healing in our bodies, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Every infirmity, every unknown scheme that is trying to work to debilitate us from moving forward, we cancel it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we say that we shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. We don't care what it is. We believe the report of the Lord in the name of Jesus. So we're going to keep it moving, God. We're going to keep it moving knowing that you're able to handle it. You're able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ask or think according to the power that work within us, God. Activate the power of God in our lives like never before. Let it be a consuming fire in our bellies, God. Even when we get tired and we don't want to do what you called us to do, may the fire of God overwhelm us that we open up our mouths to declare thus says the Lord, that we move forward in our calling, our anointing, that we move forward in the business, God, that we move forward going back to school that we move forward in the dreams that you've given us in the visions, God, they shall come to pass. Because we want to be obedient unto you. And the Bible says obedience is better than a sacrifice. So may we daily surrender unto you to keep it moving. Holy Spirit, we ask each and every day that we adhere to your instructions to keep it moving. And we obey. And so we thank you and bless you. Thank you for the word. Thank you for the man of God who gave the word. Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, a supernatural hedge of protection around Pastor Cornelius Atkinson and Reverend Lady Audra Atkinson as they're moving forward, God. We shall move forward in the things of God with them. We follow them as they follow Christ. And we love you and bless you. In the name of Jesus. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless before the glory, glory of God with too exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power henceforth and forevermore. Let those who are going to keep it moving say amen. Amen.